Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a video talking to you about this oppressor here. Um, you may have seen this uh, on their website or maybe some other places, but what essentially this is, is a device that will go over certain muzzle devices made by Strike Industries to help reduce the felt concussive blast coming off of some of these brakes. So what I have out here today with me is my 10.3 inch um, Strike Industries barrel with the uh, Checkmate comp up here on the front. And then I also have a 308 AR with the J Comp 2 on the front of it. So hopefully demonstrate what sort of effect this has um, and what effect these brakes have with and without this attached. And also it gives us a chance to check it out on a couple different muzzle devices as opposed to the same one as a, well as a couple different calibers because that is one of the really cool things is how easily this thing attaches to the um, compatible muzzle devices from Strike Industries. So again, I have the Checkmate up here, or uh, yeah, Checkmate up here on the front of this one. And just to demonstrate, um, obviously this thing is clear. Go ahead and lock the bolt back and double check. So um, all you have to do is slip this on over the top. You'll see that there's a little indexing tab up here. You just rotate that into place to where it says lock and then you can hear it ratchet down as we tighten down this front section here. Now once you have it tight, this thing is not going anywhere. It is really steady. I can hold it from the front up here and you can see the shaking from uh, my muscles, but that's, uh, that's about it. So um, nice and steady. You don't have to worry about this going anywhere. And again, to take it off, you just reverse that process, unscrew the front here till it stops and then depress so you can unlock it and then it slides right off. And then I guess just to demonstrate, here is my 308 right here with the J-Comp 2 on the front. Again, two completely different calibers. Just slide it on, rotate it till it locks, and then tighten this thing down. And once again, you are good to go. So really couldn't ask for a much better attachment method um, and the really cool thing, well, you know what, I'll go ahead and tease that, um, for the end of the video, but just wanted to demonstrate how this thing attaches. And, um, again, it, theoretically, this should reduce the blast coming off the sides of these, um, firearms. Now you might be thinking, okay, cool. I've seen similar devices from other people. Um, however, what makes this thing a little bit different as Strike Industries tells me is it maintains the effectiveness of the muzzle device. So if you are shooting it with a brake, it should feel the same with or without this attached, um, which is pretty neat. Cause some of the, again, competitors out there, uh, when you put it over a brake, there is a significant increase in felt recoil because now with all that blast being directed straight forward, a lot of that is being transferred back to the shooter. So hopefully we'll be able to see what kind of difference this thing makes as well. So. With all that said, um, let's go ahead and start the testing. I'm gonna do two different tests for the blast effectiveness, um, testing kind of a row of um, cleaning patches out in front of the muzzle device. And then we're gonna test the side blast by shooting it similar as I've done in some other brake reviews, uh, shooting it against a little target stand like that, unsupported behind it and seeing if it can blow the paper off the stand. So let's go ahead and get those tests underway. So first up, what we have here is a line of cleaning patches laid out about six to eight inches below where the muzzle's gonna be and probably about four or so inches in front of where the end of the muzzle is. This will hopefully give us some sort of idea of what kind of signature it's gonna kick up. I don't expect, just the way that this comp is built, I don't expect there to be too much of an effect, but we'll go ahead and try it with just the J-Comp and then we'll throw the oppressor on and see what kind of difference we get. All right, so from what I could tell with that, um, it seemed to scatter it all around a little bit. Uh, again, not too much, again, just because of the way the ports are designed on this. Again, I didn't expect it to. Uh, we'll try it again here uh, in a second with something else. But first, I'm gonna put, try to line this back up, put the oppressor on, and see if there's any change. All right. So 
So I'll have to look back at the footage and I'll probably play them side by side. Um, but it seems to be pretty similar. Again, just the way that this comp is designed. I didn't expect there to be too much difference in the downward blast. Um, so let's go ahead and try it with my little 5.56 five, gun over there. So, seems like there was a difference. All right. So, what that looked like to me, again, I'll play back the footage, um, and you'll know better than I do, honestly, at this point, having looked at the footage, it seemed like immediately in front here, um, there was a little bit more effect, mm -hmm. but moving out, there was much less of an effect. So it seemed to be all directed more in line, which I guess is to expect the way that this is redirecting the blast. So now that we've done this, let's do, I think, what will be a more revealing test, and that is testing the side blast and uh, how much this affects or doesn't affect that. Okay, so for this test, what I'm gonna do is have this piece of paper here, which is completely unsupported behind it, just on both ends and on top. Um, we're gonna shoot this thing. I'm gonna start with the oppressor attached and then take it off and see if there's any difference. Obviously, if it knocks the paper off with the oppressor attached, there's not much point in doing it without it attached. And then just FYI, I have it about a foot off to the left side here. And then, well, now that the wind wanted to blow it, we're a couple inches away. Um, might just have to hold that with my foot. Um, I'm gonna have it about a foot away uh, when I shoot it, when I fire, and then it's hard to tell from this angle, but I'm gonna be shifting the camera over and it's gonna be pretty much centered with the muzzle device with the center of the paper here. All right, now. <laughs> so I think it's safe to say that those results were pretty conclusive. Um, again, just because of the way these brakes typically work, I did expect for there to be a more of an effect with the side blast as opposed to kind of the straight down. Um, not to say that these aren't gonna kick up dust. Um, and if I had a good dusty area to shoot, um, I would have done that. But unfortunately, the way things are laid out here doesn't really uh, lend itself to that. However, we were able to demonstrate with the side blast. So first up we have this one, which was from the uh, 556. And up here was what was stapled to the top. So this had the most support, I guess. Um, and it would be one thing, now obviously people might say, well, shut it with the oppressor first, that weakened it, and then you shot it without it. So that's what really, you know, put it over the edge. And if it was only torn where the staples were, I might say that that m could be a valid argument. I disagree, but it could be a valid argument. However, um, this thing was absolutely torn up in places that were not affixed to the posts whatsoever. Um, I mean, just total tear throughs. So, um, pretty significant side blast. This was the 556 one again. The 308 one, see, this one would have been where it was stapled up top. And again, we have these really odd tears towards the end. Um, so, you can tell that there is a significant concussive difference from the side. Um, with the oppressor attached and without it attached. So really, I think that's where uh, the strengths of this thing lies. So with those tests done, let's go ahead and break down and wrap up my thoughts about the oppressor. So what I wanna test now is just how much of a difference there is in felt recoil with this attached and not attached. This checkmate should be a pretty effective muzzle brake, um, but let's go ahead and find out. I got some Wolf Gold ammo in here, so it's good NATO spec hot ammo. Um, again, out of this 10.3 inch uh, upper. Let's, uh, let's see if I can notice a difference or if we can see a difference on camera. Okay. All right, 
I gotta say, there might have been a slight difference, maybe a very slight difference in the felt recoil, um, maybe a little bit of an increase, but I have to say, compared to other ones I've used, um, it feels pretty dang similar. Uh, or, sorry, I should say similar to with the brick, not similar to the other ones I've used. Um, a lot of the other ones I've used, again, there's a significant increase, but uh, I'll go ahead and play those clips side by side and we'll see what you guys can see. Um, so yeah. You know what? Since we tested it with a 5.56, let's go ahead and test it with this 308. Um, I think I have some Aguila. It's technically 762 by 5.1. Um, but let's go ahead and try it with just the J-Comp up here on the front. A couple rounds, throw the oppressor on, and see what kind of difference there is. Okay, let's go ahead and attach the oppressor. Again, felt pretty similar. Again, maybe a slight, slight increase, but definitely a lot better than some of the competitors out there on the market. So let's go ahead and wrap up my thoughts about this thing. Um, I think there's a lot of good applications for these, um, but I would also say that it might not be for everyone. So let me go ahead and kind of clarify that. As you saw, it is extremely effective at reducing the sight blast. Um, so if you are someone who you know, goes to a public shooting range or, or working in a team or something like that, and you want to still maintain at least most of the effectiveness, I would say, of your muzzle brake, but you still want to reduce how much of a uh, jerk you are to your friends around you, this is a pretty good option. Again, it really reduced that side blast, as you could tell, um, but still, again, at least maintained most, if not all, of the effectiveness of these muzzle devices, at least. Um, again, the, the, being the Checkmate and the J-Comp. Um, it will also work on the Triple Crown, on the King Comp, and the Venom Flash Hider. There might be more, but those are the ones coming to my head. Basically, any of them that have basically the, uh, the four uh, flat areas for this thing to actually uh, mate to. So, again, if you're working in teams or you just wanna be friendly to the other people on the range, this is a really good option for you. Now, um, if you're just a recreational shooter, you go out by yourself, do you really need one? No, but I will also say I think it also makes it look cool. I just totally honest there, totally subjective as well, um, but I, I, think it, I, think, I think they look cool. Um, now, it's not without its downsides. It is pretty dang heavy. That was really the first thing I noticed when I first took this thing out of the box. Um, it is pretty hefty. Um, now, again, you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons. You are adding a lot of weight to the worst part of the rifle to add weight to, being the front of the rifle. Um, but if you, again, want to reduce the side blast while still maintaining effectiveness, this is pretty much the best option that I've found so far. So you really have to weigh pros and cons um, for you. Now, I kind of alluded to something really cool about this attachment method earlier on. And if you guys have seen any of the videos I've done with Strike Industries recently, whether it be a trigger con or a shot show, you'll know that they may or may not, well, they are. I, there's really no point being coy about it. They are working on a line of suppressors and they will attach via this same exact method. Um, which is a very, very solid lockup. I actually shot one of the suppressors that mounts this way at uh, TriggerCon a couple months ago, or less than a month ago, I guess, and um, held very, very, very solid. You guys know I'm a big fan of like tri-lug and bi-lug mounts. However, if you've ever, ever used those, you'll know that there's a little bit of play in there. And while that usually doesn't lead to any issues, um, I know some people are worried about baffle strikes, understandably so. With this, once you get it tightened down, this thing is not moving. So even with the suppressor with a little bit more weight out in the front, it's staying very, very solid, which is what you want. Um, so again, as far as attachment methods go, I really like this. It's the most secure and kind of quick detach where you also don't have to worry about getting your muzzle device stuck inside like you do sometimes with some taper mounts out there. Um, but big, big fan of the way it attaches. And again, I do like 
that um, it is compatible with a lot of different muzzle devices from Strike Industries. Now, it's not compatible with all of them. Uh, for example, the Sail Comp, which I've done a review on, it is not compatible with that one. Um, however, again, whether it's a Checkmate, King Comp, Triple Crown, Venom, J Comp, and again, maybe some others, check out their website, it'll have the full list. Um, it, it is very effective with those and is obviously designed for those. So if, if you really wanna avoid weight, then maybe this isn't the, the accessory for you. Um, but again, I think for those of you who um, understand and appreciate working around other people while firing, um, this will be a, a very appreciated addition uh, to, to those of you who, uh, th those are the fellow range users uh, while you're out there. And again, I, I do really think it looks cool. And one cool thing too, I should say too, for these, this attachment method is you may not want to do it with this one, but especially with a suppressor, this is a very easy attachment method to do if the muzzle device is recessed under the handguard. You could probably get away with doing it a little bit with this. You obviously wouldn't want to take it off. Um, but especially when the suppressor comes out, you can recess this uh, recess the muzzle device under your handguard and still be able to attach and detach it um, fairly easily without having to take your handguard off or anything crazy like that. But again, that's really more uh, uh, more applicable to the suppressor. So again, you, you really have to weigh the pros and cons for yourselves. If you're okay with putting up with the weight, which on a little shorty like this um, isn't a huge deal. If you're okay with that, then again, it is very effective and does what it is advertised to do very, very well. Um, but if, if weight is an issue, um, then you know this isn't something you have to have uh, for your rifle or pistol. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I did not pay for this. This was provided um, at no cost by Strike Industries, um, along with the muzzle devices to test it with. Um, so just to put that out there, but again, as you saw, you saw the results for, them, for, for yourselves and what kind of difference it made. So again, you can weigh all that in your decision-making process. Um, but again, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, it. It definitely works if, again, you can put up with, with the added weight out in the front end. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and throw those in the comment section down below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Um, I'm also uploading to Full30 now, so definitely check that out over there. And if you feel so inclined, I do have a Patreon page. Um, so that is really what allows me to come out here and shoot uh, a lot more than I would have otherwise. Um, you know, I'm doing my own hand loading now just to make it as economic as possible. Um, but again, the people supporting me over there definitely uh, really help out in um, can, me being able to continue producing content at the rate that I have been. Um, I also do upload all my content there early as well as doing some exclusive content. Um, and we are now doing some giveaways too from time to time, as well as like a monthly live stream, which we need to get scheduled up here. So I'll talk to you, be, I'll be talking to you guys um, probably within the next day or two to schedule that next one. Um, but anyway, with all that said, as always, I hope you're able to get something out of this video. And I really appreciate you watching.